A few weeks back, I created a video showcasing Microsoft's brand new Windows 10 operating system. In that video, I mainly focused on using Windows 10 and a desktop environment with a mouse and keyboard. In this video, however, I'm going to show you a little bit more about Windows 10 and how it behaves on a tablet, specifically on a small screen tablet computer. Now the first thing I'm going to mention about running Windows Tab on my Asus Vivo Tab Note 8 was the relatively painless upgrade process from Windows 8.1 to Windows 10. Um, in contrast to my desktop PC, which was a comparatively difficult upgrade process, the upgrade on my tablet computer went off without so much as a hitch. Now, because I was impatient and wanted to run Windows 10 on the day it was released, I took a slightly different uh, approach to upgrading to Windows 10 than many people will have done uh, using the traditional method, which is to go through the Windows Upgrade Utility. What I did was I downloaded the Windows 10 Media Creation Tool and, when prompted, allowed it to upgrade my existing installation of Windows 8. After the installation completed, and I verified that Windows 10 had indeed become activated, I opted to do a full reset and wipe of the device. Now, I've chosen to do this because I've had problems with doing Windows version upgrades in the past, and I wanted to get as close as possible to a clean, out-of-the-box installation to Windows 10 as possible. And that wipe and reformat procedure was also extremely painless. It can be done from directly within the Windows 10 operating system. Um, and at the end of it all, I was left with an extremely stable and extremely usable version of Windows 10 on my tablet. Now, the next thing I want to touch on about the Windows 10 experience was the driver support in that operating system, because that's something that was actually relatively concerning to me as I was doing the upgrade on my tablet. Um, when I first finished the Windows 10 installation and came, with, it came out of the box with sort of a clean install, there was a lot of things that weren't working quite properly. The battery indicator on my device, for one thing, the accelerometer wasn't working, and the, uh, the stylus on the screen for the uh, touchscreen wasn't working very well as well. Um, Fortunately, all I had to do was run a, uh, a standard Windows update, and it actually pulled all the latest drivers for my device uh, without me having to go out and, and hunt to the uh, Asus support sites and trying to find the various driver downloads. Um, so from, from that perspective, it definitely looks like Microsoft has done a great job of pushing functional device drivers through Windows Update for Windows 10 devices. So, now that we've got a fully functional tablet, let's dive into the OS a little bit. And the first thing you'll notice is the improved tile interface that builds on the tile interface of Windows 8. Uh, the first thing that you'll see is that the desktop applications and the Windows Store applications are more closely integrated than in Windows 8. Launching a desktop application, such as Mozilla Firefox, will result in it launching in full screen. And the one thing you'll notice is the distinct lack of a taskbar, meaning you have no ability to interact with Windows desktop applications differently than you would with the Windows Store applications. Um, you interact with both of them via the start screen, and uh, you can switch between applications using the Windows swipe gestures. You can perform a search from the start screen by pressing the magnifying glass icon, um, or you can simply bring up the virtual keyboard and just start typing, and that will also bring up a, uh, a search window for you. Now, a couple of other uh, navigation notes about the uh, new start screen. You can go back to the previous app you were working in by pressing the, uh, the little arrow, and uh, you can access the All Applications menu by pressing the three horizontal lines icon in the upper right corner. Um, of course, just like with Windows 8, you can customize the start screen however you want. Uh, you can remove apps and pin new apps and resize tiles um, just pretty much the same way as it, uh, as it worked in Windows 8 and Windows 8.1. Um, as neat as the new start screen is, though, it can be prohibitive to productivity, especially if you're using your tablet for um, uh, editing documents or multitasking and the like. Uh, fortunately, Microsoft has given users the choice of going back to a traditional desktop environment. Uh, it comes complete with the start menu and taskbar. To make the switch, just swipe in from the right-hand side on the screen to access the quick settings menu and tap the button that says tablet mode and it'll hop you right back into the familiar desktop. Even better, the new Windows Store apps now run in windowed mode, so if you don't want to, you never actually have to interact with the new full screen start menu tile interface. The quick access menu, which I just touched on, has been revamped since Windows 8 and includes um, a lot of new quick settings menu options. Among them, easy one-click access to the screen brightness and connection settings, uh, along with battery saver mode. And then it's also got a new feature that I think Windows 8 was sorely missing, and that's the ability to enable rotation lock. 
The keyboard in Windows 10 is essentially the same keyboard as in Windows 8, and unfortunately still has some of the major shortcomings of the Windows 8 virtual keyboard. The keyboard is excessively large and has a tendency to open in front of the window you're trying to type into, meaning the only thing you can actually do to see the text that you're typing is to drag the keyboard around the screen, which is exceptionally irritating. The keyboard has another irritating quirk. When you open it by clicking the keyboard icon with the stylus, it opens the handwriting input panel, and to get back to the keyboard input, you have to click about three different buttons, which significantly hampers my workflow. Unfortunately, at this point, there doesn't seem to be an option to disable this behavior, dooming me to a slower workflow every time I need to type something in. Or at least until Microsoft releases an update that allows you to disable the handwriting input. Uh, no sign on when that's going to be coming down the pipeline, unfortunately. Windows 10 allows you to schedule a reboot of your device when installing updates, meaning the days of your system rebooting in the middle of doing important work are theoretically gone. Unfortunately, I haven't had all that much success with the uh, Windows scheduled restarts. Uh, for example, when I scheduled an update for 3 a.m., uh, my tablet didn't actually seem to restart because it was in standby mode uh, when 3 a.m. rolled around, so I was greeted by the lovely you need to restart your computer message when I came back the next morning to use my tablet. Um, not a terrible problem, but hopefully that's something that Microsoft will address in a future software update. And finally, I do want to touch briefly on battery life in Windows 10. Um, out of the box, at least on my uh, Asus VivoTab, the battery life in Windows 10 was actually a little bit worse than in Windows 8.1. However, once I went ahead and enabled battery saving mode, it improves the battery life to become comparable to Windows 8, and possibly even a little bit better. You can configure battery saving mode to be enabled at all times by navigating to Settings, System, battery saver, settings, and enabling it to turn on when battery drops below 100%. In conclusion, Windows 10 is a brand new operating system that attempts to bridge the divide between tablet devices and more traditional workstations like laptops or desktops. Microsoft has greatly improved the start screen tile interface, but allowed users the ability to go back to a traditional desktop environment should they choose. The new Quick Access Settings menu, available by swiping in on the right-hand side, has some new useful features in it, such as Rotation Lock and the ability to enable Battery Saver mode, among other things. And Microsoft has greatly improved the delivery of device drivers through the Windows Update service. The operating system does have some shortcomings, especially related to battery life and the on-screen keyboard. But overall, I would say it is a very good tablet operating system and well worth the free upgrade. For INET, this is Christopher, reporting.